Kamaru Usman in a recent interview with Gorillava says he gave Jorge Masvidal too much respect on the feet. He also said he would finish Jorge Masvidal inside four runs in the rematch. I gave him too much respect on the stand-up and um, he's, he's a very dangerous opponent and yeah, he kicks hard, he punches hard, but nothing that I haven't seen before and nothing that I haven't felt before. And um, I think I just kind of, just me, I think it was just the whole event, you know, being there, fighting in the morning and being quarantined. And I felt a little, uh, I wasn't too, I wasn't myself the whole time. So it was, it was kind of tough to be able to just let go, let loose and, and do whatever I wanted. But by the third round, watching it over, I could have opened up and I could have just done whatever I wanted, just like I do with everybody. So honestly, I think if that fight did happen again, I think I won't stop him inside probably four rounds. Colby Covington claims that Tyron Woodley pulled out again out of the agreed rematch. He posted this on his Instagram saying, This was supposed to be your main event August 22nd on ESPN until Tyron did what his daddy should have and pulled out again. At UFC on ESPN 13, Calvin Cater defeated Dan Ige via unanimous decision. Here's what he had to say at the post-fight press conference. Dan's a tough kid and we knew he'd be explosive, you know, so he, to deal with that explosiveness, you kind of got to go a little off rhythm and uh, just stay behind your jab. And uh, teammate Ralph Font was telling me to do that the whole time, just get that jab off, stay behind the jab. And uh, everything presented itself um, behind the jab. Yeah, I felt like it might be, um, those opportunities might present itself. And uh, I was even open to taking him down, if, you know, just win, round, win rounds and things, but didn't have to do it. And every time I say that, I go and just defensively wrestle and just strike. So. Um, either way, got the job done. Uh, I heard it was over seven on the takedown, so that was pretty cool, but um, just happy to get the win. I mean, if I make my case, I don't got to do it with my mouth. I do it in the cage. You know, like all these other guys, they all talk. Where I'm from, man, <laughs> we, don't, we don't really talk about stuff too much. You, you go and prove it. You earn it. And in here, that's not really the business model, so it's a little bit of adjustment for me. And um, I just, uh, I go out, I fight, and I try to earn every opportunity in front of me. And uh, the champ should see that, you know, he's saying he wants contenders and uh, you're not going to find one more than myself. I'm so proud of Dan Eger right now. I met this kid with 2 on one He hit line in the UFC and uh, he showed nothing but heart today. I love you, kid. I'll see you on Monday, baby. Got a lot of, a lot of to run. Excuse my English. Michael Bisping on the Believe in Me podcast says he received a lot of backlash for saying Max Holloway won at UFC 251. So a lot of controversy in this one, and I'm getting a lot of abuse. Why? Because I call the fight as I see it, right? I call the fight as I see it, and the fight that I saw was Volkanovski, sorry, Holloway, pardon me, winning the first two rounds and looking really good, and he definitely made some adjustments and was improved from the first fight. And the fight that I saw was also Volk so Holloway won the first two rounds. Volkanovski came on strong and won the last two rounds. Clearly, clearly won the last two. Max clearly won the first two. And the round that was in question was round three. Now, when I watched it, I had it for Max. You know, but it was close, but I did have it for Max. And I, th I, I said, you know, and I was, I was just calling the fight as I saw it. Well, you know, I, I guess he's got a lot of passionate Australian fans because I've had a lot of abuse in my inbox on Instagram. Fuck you, you maggots, and all this type. Volkanovski won that fight clearly. Fuck you, this, that, cough, you commentator, you're so biased. Yeah, listen, first off, it was a tremendous fight. Both guys, Holloway. I thought Holloway, you know, he should be very proud of himself. He had no training partners. He did it all via Zoom. Not making excuses, by the way. That's just the facts. And he won the first two to three rounds. He looked really good. He had a game plan. He looked better. He, he, he 
Alex Jones, Max at the start, but Max, being the champion that he is, made some adjustments, adjustments himself, came on strong, clearly had the better gas tank. I think Max started to slow down as well. And he won the marathon, not the sprint. And Volkanovski, and still. And he won the fight. Simple as that. It was a close fight. It certainly wasn't a robbery. You know, and anytime it's a close fight like that, that's just the way it goes. Commiserations to uh, Max Holloway. I thought he won the fight. Just getting a little sweat before the show. And there's my co-commentator, Paul Felder. Going to be a long night. Start at 2 a.m., finish at 10.30, and then do it all again real soon. Oh. Ryan Kelleher gives his prediction for a three-run bantamweight bout between Sean O'Malley versus Marlon Vera. If O'Malley knocks out Marlon Vera, he's for real. I mean, he's already done great. He has good hands. We know he's a good striker. But if he knocks out a guy in Marlon Vera whose hands are getting better and better, has a chin, his jiu-jitsu is black belt, high level. The only thing is in this fight is... Chito Vera is not a wrestler. He's he is not a guy that enforces a lot of wrestling, a lot of takedowns, a lot of clinch. If the fight ends up there, he does really well. He's good at top position. He's good at submitting. He's good at ground and pound. But he's going to strike with O'Malley. And I think the UFC knows that. The guy's going to go in there. He's going to be willing to exchange. And O'Malley has the power to probably put anybody away. And it's not even just power. It's his speed and his timing and stuff like that. I could see a scenario where O'Malley kind of catches uh, Cheeto maybe in the second, third round after Cheeto absorbs a couple of shots and gets rocked a little bit but stays in there. I just don't know if Marlon Vera is going to be able to take O'Malley down or even look to do it enough to really gas O'Malley out and make it work wrestling-wise. So I got to lean towards O'Malley, but I think Cheeto is a real test, and I think he's a guy that can potentially get it done and submit uh, O'Malley and kind of ruin that hype. But... If O'Malley gets it done, you got to give the guy his props, especially if he finishes a guy in cheat, though. It's like, hey, that's not an easy thing to do, and that's a real top 15 guy that he's fighting who has experience in the UFC, who has finishing abilities, and has, you know, uh, uh, good skills, well-rounded. So uh, if O'Malley knocks this guy out, that's where I shut the f*** up, maybe. Uh, and uh, I kind of, you know, give him his props and uh, see, see what he does from there on out. Look who it is. Look who it is. This man looking sharp, looking sharp. And, um, you know, we end up going, me, Henry, and Kamaru, we end up going to watch the fight with the Prince. I don't know which one, uh, the name, uh, but they, they greeted us. They, they treated us like family. It was awesome. I mean, we went to, to some property out in uh, Abu Dhabi and... Uh, yeah, sure enough, first thing we got there, they, they, they put this on us and uh, they, 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 
They also said, hey, there's going to be a tailor come in and he's going to get your measures and he's going to give you another one. And so they gave us like two or three of these. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It was pretty good.